Welcome to the American Football Institute Sports Channel with former National Football League defensive tackle and now an NFL consultant, Chris Mamalanga. Welcome, welcome family. My name is Chris Mamalanga. We're here at the American Football Institute uh, weekly show. Tonight we have a very special guest. I'm super excited. A good friend of mine who's actually one of the top coaches here, one of the top high schools in Los Angeles, California. And that's none other than Mr. Anthony Jefferson. AJ, how's it going? It's going good, brother. How's everything going out there? Man, I'm just thankful for another one. And I'm, I'm very <laughs> appreciative. I know you're getting ready to take a nice trip to Hawaii here tomorrow. And uh, you still made time to spend time with us here in our in our uh, in our show tonight. So uh, definitely humbled and appreciate it, man. Hey, no problem. Anything I can do to help you guys out, I'm here for you always. And, you know, we just need a little bit of break because yesterday we had our college showcase. So kind of wore me out a little bit. So I need to recharge the batteries a little bit. College showcase. Can you can you kind of tell me a little bit about that, AJ? Sure, sure, sure. So yesterday we were, we're in the middle of spring ball now. So I had about 35 coaches come out and just watch my kids practice. You know, it's a good way to get the kids some exposure early. So, you know, we just did some change of direction drills, some one-on-one, some seven-on-seven, -seven, just so the coaches can see the kids move around in the early evaluation period, just try to get some kids some scholarship. And it was pretty successful. I think I got six kids scholarships yesterday, which is a pretty good thing. Really? That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a good turnout. You know, we had some defensive coordinator. We had Tosh Lupo, the D coordinator at Oregon was there. We had the D coordinator from Washington. We had the defensive line coach from Wisconsin. We had Ken Norton from UCLA. So we had, we had a real good turnout yesterday. Man, 35 schools, that's that's incredible. And that's a testament to some of the relationships you've built over the years, which I've seen, uh, I've witnessed over right. the years in our relationship, how how you get down with the recruiting and things like that. But listen, I apologize. I jumped right into it when you brought up the showcase, <laughs> but I want to give you a little bit of time to kind of introduce yourself, sure. kind of your background and, 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 and things like that and how, you know, um, and then we'll lead into uh, also about how you became the head coach of Cathedral High School or, or uh, how long you've been there, things like that. All right, for sure. My, my name is Anthony Jefferson. You know, uh, I'm a, I'm from the South Bay in California. I went to Losinger High School. It was a pretty good athlete there, you know, but as a young man, I didn't know how important academics was. So, you know, I could have had some D1 scholarships, but I had to take the long road there because I didn't focus in the classroom like I should have. So I went the junior college route. So I wind up going to Sonoma State, which was a Division II non-scholarship school. So I played pretty good there. I played offense and defense there. And then uh, I was also there with Larry Allen, which a lot of you guys may know, who's probably one of the best offensive linemen that ever played yeah. in the field. So uh, after I left Sonoma, I was in camp with the 49ers for a while, went and played in Saskatchewan, Canada for a little bit. You know, then I realized that, you know, I had some kids already. And, you know, once I played in the Arena Football League for the Milwaukee Mustangs, I said, you know what? You know, I think I ran my course. So then I, you know, had my kids. So I just became a dad, full-time dad. And so my, my most important thing was I wanted my kids to be coached the right way because there's a lot of people out there coaching that don't know what they're doing. So I wanted to make sure my kids were co coached the right way, know how to tackle so they don't get hurt. So I started coaching at Pop Warner, coached my kids through Pop Warner. Then my kids went to high school. So I said, okay, I got them enough fundamentally sound. They should be okay. So my oldest son was at St. John Bosco. Had a pretty good career over there. He played there for his freshman year. Left there, went to Cathedral. So I was just a dad at Cathedral. And then one day, one of the coaches fired a couple of his coaches and asked me to come help him out. So I helped him out. And now, 16 years later, happened to be the head coach at Cathedral. So, you know, wow. both of my, I had two boys to go to Cathedral. You know, it's it pretty good, pretty interesting because my oldest son went to Cathedral, went to UCLA, was with the Bears, made the 53-man active roster. Broke his arm in the last preseason game and then was getting ready for the next year and herniated a disc in his back. We had a disc injury. He had to retire. My second son, went to, he went to OV. Then he was two years on the Dolphins, two years on the Bengals. He was on the Washington Commanders last year. So, you know, I had a fun run, but, you know, it's a lot of work, a lot of dedication. But, you know, it just shows that if you work hard, good things will happen for you. Yeah, so not only are you a former player, you're a former parent of, of, of players who not only excelled at the high school level, excelled at the college level, and then made it into the NFL. That is correct. That's awesome, man. That's one of the reasons why I was excited about having you on tonight, because you have multiple angles that right. you can speak on. You can speak on your personal experience playing. 
you know, I remember you in high school. I mean, right. you, you had a, yeah, you had a yeah, nice yeah. run. You took losing your high school to a CIF championship, I believe. Is that, 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 is that that's right? true, 1986. 1986. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Was that with Marcus Patton? No, Marcus had her graduated. It was with Mike Reddington, Sean Smith, and Dana Florence. Dana Florence from West Coast Customs, right? Big, that's it. Big Dane from Big West Dane. Coast Customs. That's it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, you, you, you were successful in your own right um, as a player, and now you're very successful as a father mm -hmm. uh, raising some football players. And, and, uh, and then now you're, 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 you're building up your own success as a head coach, which is, right. uh, which is good stuff. And, you know, those of you guys who are not familiar with Cathedral High School, Cathedral is literally uh, a stone's throw away from Dodger <laughs> Stadium. That is correct. And right across from the 110 freeway in downtown L.A. And I encourage anyone out there who's, who's ever in L.A. during football season to go to a game because it has the, the only school that I know of that has the L.A. city skyline and the back backdrop uh, with the scoreboard. That's correct. They, they say we have the best skyline in all of California and maybe in all of high school football. So That's it's, awesome, it's, man. It's, a, it's a great view from there. Right. Right. Well, we have some questions from some of our, um, our viewers and okay. a few questions of our own. Tonight, the emphasis is going to be, uh, you know, kind of hit the trifecta as a player for you, as a father of players and as a coach. So for sure. Uh, I, I do remember a pretty cool story about you, Sonoma <laughs> State. <laughs> and can you kind of share with the audience, please, the the uh, your pro day story uh, at Sonoma State when when uh, it was you and Larry Allen, right? That that is that is correct. So uh, we were having a pro day our senior year, and then uh, I had went to class because I had made a deal with my coaches because, you know, they, I wanted to get my degree and I wanted to graduate. So I was in class and then the coach, we, we didn't have cell phones back then. So he beat me 911. So I, I returned a, a call, beeper. You had a beeper. Beep. I had a beeper back then. <laughs> so he tells me, you know, it's um, Washington, San Francisco. It was like nine teams there. And they wanted me to come run my 40-yard 40 40 dash for them. So I'm like, shit, coach, I just got out of class. You know, I don't have no stuff. But I went over there anyway. So I had some jeans on and – uh. And some, vans. Say, and some and some vans and I ran a <laughs> I ran a I ran a four three two times for him with some stone washed jeans and some vans on. So that, that got me into the door and got me into camp with the 49ers. I, I have uh, my brother in law went to uh, Mike Tito um, and a good friend of mine, Dave Hansen. They both went to mm -hmm. Sonoma State. That is true. I remember and, Dave uh, Hansen. And uh for for some for some odd reason, I want to say they said that not only did you run a four three with vans on. <laughs> and 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 uh, uh, stone washed jeans, <laughs> but you also had a backpack on, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to get I had to get them grades in. You know, that's the most important thing. You got to get your grades. So that, that that's that's a funny story. And every time I see Chris, we always laugh about that story. So that was that was a yeah. good back then. And and then the cool thing is, you play literally with a Hall of Famer. I did uh, amongst the best that ever did it. Uh, uh, Larry Allen and I, uh, coincidentally, uh, some of you who may not know of Larry Allen from overseas uh, here in the U.S., he is actually uh, one of the best offensive linemen to ever play the game. Uh, he came out in 1994. Correct. Larry, Larry Allen and I were actually in the same uh, combine group mm -hmm. along with Willie McGinnis and, and right. some other notable names. So, um, Larry, obviously, uh, he had the goods. But, um, you know, the big boys didn't give him a chance for whatever reason. Right. And uh, Sonoma State was the place. Right. You know what's so funny is, you know, Larry Allen also went to Compton Centennial. So he's a local kid as well. So he's down the street from Los Inger, just a right few down miles down, down the right street. Down. Absolutely. I, I didn't know he went to uh, uh, Compton Centennial. Yeah, it's crazy. Nice, strongest, nice. strongest man to ever play in the NFL. 700 plus pound bench and right. more importantly he was just a, 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 a athletic guy who was also right. big and he could run right because you if you remember that monday night football game when the linebacker intercepted the ball and larry yes. ran the linebacker down where they didn't score I, I don't think it was i think it was that was thanksgiving wasn't it or was it a, what a monday night i think it was a monday night game right so yeah, that, was, that was definitely pretty. um when that happened i remember john madden going nuts correct that, that's uh, it 
uh, over over that play because he had never seen such a big man move like especially that. as an offensive lineman right move like that so you were you, you were definitely in great company right you know and that, when he did that it didn't surprise me because i can remember we were in college playing intramurals and he would come down and dunk the ball at 330 pounds wow just a freak athlete definitely a freak athlete i know he's, he's very good friends with dave hansen yeah um a good friend of mine who played at, at um at Sonoma State as well. Right. But, uh, man, hey, listen, I know your time is valuable. Uh, no problem. Uh, and uh, please apologize for – I don't want to make it sound like I'm de-edifying you as head coach Anthony Jefferson, <laughs> but, our, but our relationship uh, allows me to call you AJ. Right, right, right. Uh, no, no, you, that's, that's his nickname, Coach AJ. Right. And that's uh, just the acronym for Anthony Jefferson. So no Absolutely. disrespect. Um <laughs> But AJ, we, we have a couple of questions. We'll run through the questions. And from there, uh, before I, I start the questions, I'd like to encourage our audience uh, to follow us on our Facebook group, American Football Institute group, um, and also on YouTube. You can uh, like and subscribe us uh, with us on YouTube, and you can follow us on Instagram with the American Football Institute. Our website is AmericanFootballInstitute.com, and uh, primarily our focus is uh, and our motto is faith, family, and football. And um, basically, uh, my goal is to educate those who are not here in the U.S. about American football through some of these interviews and some of the uh, information that we're putting out there. So uh, getting guys like A.J. is not an easy thing. He's extremely busy. He's got a family. Um, uh, he's a head coach. And um, definitely, definitely an honor. So let's get going, uh, Coach. All right, for sure. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's knock it out the box. Right on, right on. Our first question um, will come up in, what are some of the tips that you give the players to perform better, Coach? You know, the most important thing is you have to take care of your body. That's that's the most important thing. But coming right a close second is you got to be a student athlete. You right. know, you could be the best athlete out there, but if you don't have the grades, it's not going to happen. So you have to be a student athlete and take care of your body. Those are the two most important tips that I can give anybody who's an inspiring athlete out there. Taking care of your body is, is definitely a huge thing. And Absolutely. I've got to actually experience that I want to share because some of our American uh, audience members uh, may not be able to relate. Here in the U.S., it's uh, what is what is the minimum requirement? You have to have a 2.3? 2.3. 2.3 GPA, otherwise you have to take a knee, Correct. right? Meaning Correct. you can't play. Correct. So grades are, are um, what, what are grades when, when college coaches come and talk to you as a head coach? Mm -hmm. What is one of the first questions they ask you about a, a prospective athlete? The first question always is, how are their grades? Let me see their transcript. They want to see the transcript before they see the highlight tape. Because, you know, they, they if they don't have grades, they don't want to waste their time on them. And, and, so, and why, why are grades so important, Coach? Forgive because me your, for, for talking like uh, kind of like on a fifth yeah, grade no, level on this because I know no you're, you're an you expert know, if you, in, if you, in if you take care If you take care of this in the classroom, it's going to show that you're accountable. And, you know, at the next level past high school, you have to be accountable because they don't have time to be babysitting you. So their, their focus is getting kids who is dialed in on the football field and in the classroom, because, you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but with the scholarship that these coaches get, they have like so many a 3.0, 4.0, and they only have like two or three of the 2.3s. So they can't have their whole team with these 2.3s. So they got to get athletes who are student athletes who want to be successful in the classroom and on the football field. So, you but, know, but even, I mean, th those are great points coach, but I want to make sure we emphasize that they're not even allowed no, it's no. not even in the rules here in the United States no. to be even able to play like the NCAA, mm -hmm. the governing bodies, the institutions will not even allow, even if you're the greatest. Uh, uh, doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Right? You're not, you're not going to play. And then, you know, the unique thing is, you know, when AJ was coming out, not only did you have to meet the GPA requirement, you also had to meet the requirement for the SAT in order to take an official visit. Right. Either the SAT or the ACT. Or, or the ACT. Yeah. So, you know, you know, you, you got to get, I mean, you know, don't, don't fool yourself and thinking that you're so good that you can still get in. It won't happen. Trust me. Right. Right. We've seen that many times, right? I, I'm, Somebody living proof, who's, I'm living proof of it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I had to go to the JC because I didn't take care of business in the classroom. 
in JC, meaning junior college, correct? That is correct, junior college. And, and, and which junior college did you attend, Coach? I went to El Camino. The Warriors, baby. That's the, <laughs> John Featherstone. John Featherstone, rest in peace. Absolutely. Was, uh, had a great legacy over there. Had players like yourself. Greg had, Franklin, uh, Dana Florence, Sean Smith, Larry Barner. You know, it was a. It Derek Deese. Derek Deese. Correct. Suge Knight. Suge Knight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's even funny is Curtis Conway was there for a half a semester, but he didn't play before he went to SC. Is that right? That is right. He was wow. there for. Yep. So, it, it, so it, much it, talent from that program. Jeez. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach. We'll keep it rolling to our next hey, question no, here. No problem. What are the qualities of a great young athlete that you look for and that you think that, that college coaches look for? You know, you know, just here in California now, it, it's a lot of kids that's transferring out because they're not happy where their school is at. And college coaches want to know that they have somebody who's going to stick through their program through the good and the bad. With this portal thing now, you know, they don't want somebody who's going to be a one and done and going to the next school or looking for the thing. They want somebody who's going to stick with it. And that's the same thing I'm looking for. You know, I want some kids who's going to be with us for the duration of their time. I don't like one hit wonders, you know, I want, cause in this, and it's very frustrating as a coach, once you get somebody and you develop them, and then all these people try to come take the, all the hard work that you did where now they got the finished product. So the main thing I'm looking for is some loyalty and dedication. Those are the most important things for me as a coach as I'm looking for my players. So you bring up a very important point, Coach, with the transferring and and uh, how much of that you see with other schools that are just tampering and poaching players from each other at the high school. You know, is that is that something that happens a lot? It, it happens every single day. And, you know, the thing about it is, you know, they're not getting the young players. They're waiting till you put all the time and effort and develop the player where they have scholarship offers now. And now they want to come get the finished product. It happens every single day. So uh, uh, let me ask you this. The coaches at the next level, what I mean by next level, at the university levels. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're telling me, let me just make sure I'm not speaking for you. So you're saying that loyalty and commitment are a big thing with, when it comes to scouting. Huge, huge. Because, you know, like they, the first thing it says, how long have you had it? You know, they, they, wow. they want to know. They, they actually had, ask you that now. They, they ask that. And then if you have a kid that you didn't have for four years, they say, well, why did he transfer? They right. want to know why would he leave that school and come to your school? Because, you know, yeah, they're thinking, then, if he did it in high school, it's a great chance to do that again in college. And what they're saying is they're trying to find kids with with, uh, with great character. That's the, that's the main thing. Yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> character, character is key. All right. Thank you. We'll go on to our next question here, Coach. Sounds good, Coach. What are some of the fundamentals? And we're talking – I'm speaking to you from a parent standpoint – Correct. What are some of the fundamentals that my child should practice regularly? Uh, we, have and, and thing, we have this thing that's called EDDs, and that's mm -hmm. your everyday drills. And you what can, are a handful of EDDs that you can uh, share with some of the parents out there? And their you know, it's like say if you're playing DB, but that's what I coach, right? You want to backpedal. You want to do your W drill. You want to do some change of direction drills. You want to do some in phase, some out of phase. You want to do some ball drills. You just want to do those. But those are the drills you do every single day. They're called EDDs. And, and those EDDs, can we, can we, I mean, as coaches, because you and I coach together, a lot of folks don't realize that on this <laughs> on, on this show tonight. But, but EDDs are typically boring, right? Because you're doing it every single day. Right. And, and so my, I'm getting somewhere with this. My point is, for some of those young players out there and parents, they have to do what I call mastering the mundane. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they got to master the boring stuff. Correct. Correct. Even though you're doing it every day, that's the most important part of the practice because you're working on your craft. Awesome. And you got you to gotta work on your craft if you want to be special in this game. Those are great nuggets, Coach. We'll go on to our next question. Sounds good, Coach. What are some of the common mistakes young athletes make? Sometimes they read their press clippings where they think they're better than what they are. So they, and, start, you know, the, the head, they start getting the big head. They start getting the big head. You know, you get a couple of offers, and then you, you forget how you got those offers where right. you start taking days off. And, you know, our motto is no days off. There's no off season. You ha it's a grind. It's a grind, and you have right. to grind every day if you want to get to where you want to be at. So let me get this straight, Coach. You're telling me 
that college coaches are coming to you and they're looking for guys who are committed. They're looking for guys who are loyal, with guys who have high character, and guys who work hard. That's what they want. That's what they want. That's what so they want. That's great information there, and, and that's that's the type of information that we want to share. Right. You know, because those are the type of things that I love about American football and any high level sport. Right. Where you know they learn those life skills, and that's a, that's I mean, wouldn't you agree? Those are life skills. Absolutely. Like I, you know, I have no doubt about it. And you know what's the crazy thing about it is. I still talk to the guys I played Pop Warner, high school and college with still to this day, because you build those bond with those guys. And, you know, if you're really into it and you're dedicated, you don't want to let your brother down. It's on the other side of you. So you're willing right. to sacrifice yourself so your brother can do good. So that brotherhood just kicks in and it's you know, there's nothing like like going in the trenches and, and uh, uh, Man. You know, blood, sweat and tears together. You know, that's something that uh, we share in athletics with, a lot of times uh, with military. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, 100%. The only difference is in military is life and death. For us, it's winning and losing. And, uh, <laughs> we don't have on, no on, on, the, on the other side waiting for us. You know what I'm saying? We just have yeah. a big tackle like Chris trying to come get us. <laughs> well, to catch a 4-3 guy in vans <laughs> and, and bleach watch jeans, that, that, that's going to be a tall order. I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, to to go hide in the corner and wait for you to pass me or something. But, you know what? I got, I got a funny story about you too when you was on the Giants. So we might have to tell that story. If we have time at the end of the day. Well, hey, we'll, we'll we'll get there. We have a couple more questions, and then we're gonna have a couple more, uh, you know, a couple more stories that we'll share for uh, sure with our audience. But uh, let's go on to our next question, please. What are the best ways to keep my child practicing and training? That's more like a motivation question. It, it, it is, and, and here's the thing about it: is even though you're doing your EDDs. Make it fun for your son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, don't always do it at the same place. You know, do it at a different place. Change the time of the days you do it. And, and here's the most important thing I think about it is, is you have to listen to what your kids are telling you. You know, listen you to mean? Your, You know, sometimes parents get caught up in trying to live their dreams through their kids. Mm. But listen, listen to what your kid is telling you. You know, like I, I have some kids that are telling me, you know, I couldn't do my homework because my dad made me go to practice. You know, and, and, and even though you need that practice, but you got to remember, you got to be a student athlete first. So parents, listen to your kids. I mean, don't give them days off, but listen to what they're telling you, because sometimes they're trying to tell you something like they may be hurt, but you're not trying to listen to them. And now they may tear their hamstring instead of just pulling that hamstring. So listen to your kids because they know their body better and then they know what's going on. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough nowadays because with this pandemic, a lot of kids haven't done nothing for two years. So they're, they're hurting their social skills a little bit, you know. So just listen to your kids, guys, and, you know, be observant. Know what's going on with them. That's great advice, Coach. And, yeah. you know, you brought up a good point about, about being hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a diff there's definitely a difference Absolutely, 100%. between you being hurt and, and being injured. injured. Correct. And can you talk a little bit about that, Coach? Listen, after the first day of practice, you're going to hurt. And you're going to hurt for the whole season. Everybody. Everybody. And you're going to hurt for the whole season. It's not like you're going to have some day. You're going to hurt the whole season. And you, you practice hurt and you play hurt. But if you're injured, that's when you shut it down. But you're right. going to hurt every single day, every single game. And that's part of playing the game that you love. One of my coaches used to call being hurt an owie. You know, uh, understand the difference between an owie and an injury. Right. And uh, and definitely that's something that us as coaches, as parents, can definitely uh, make sure we identify and have clarity uh, right. pretty quickly. And then the other thing they always tell you, too, is you can't make the club in the tub. Right. Because then you got the whole flip side, right? You got guys who – they have a, a, a little soreness here and they don't even want to practice. They don't want to practice. You know, the, the, the whole thing is, you know, you know, you know, your kids, and you know, if they're, they're joshing you a little bit. So, yeah. you know, just stay on them and that's it. Cause you know, if you want to get to where you want to be at, got to play through the hurt. You're gonna There's going to be some pain involved, right? All day, every day. All right. We'll keep it pushing coach. Our okay, next question here coming up. How do you choose the players for your team? And, and I think what I'm talking about choosing is the starters. How do we choose the starters, uh, the guys who are starting off the game, whether it's in the first, second, third, or fourth quarter? Right. The, the way the way I do it is you earn it. 
So it's not like I'm choosing you. You you earn that. And the way you earn that is taking care of business in the classroom, taking care of business in the weight room, taking care of business on the field, and being a respectable young man on campus. You know, we don't have our pants hanging off, sagging. You know what I'm saying? We have our shirts tucked in, our shirts, and all that goes into who's going to start for us. So, you know, right. it's a combination of things, but also working hard on the field is a big part of it, but it's not the most important thing. Because, you know, there's a small percentage of these guys that's going to make it in the NFL. My job is to raise good young men who one day they're going to come back and say, Coach, you know what? Thank you, Coach. And they're going to bring their kids back to the school and let me coach their kids. That's that's the reason why I do it. You've had a lot of success at Cathedral um, in getting guys out to colleges. I have. Can you kind of just share with us over the 16-year career you've had as a coach there at Cathedral some of the names of players in schools that you sent kids to. Okay. Um, Hunter Eccles went to Hunter USC. Eccles. Went to USC. Randall Carroll was the fastest guy in the state of California for two years. He went to UCLA. We've had uh, Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winner. Was that Cathedral? Yeah, the Bryce won the, he won the Heisman Trophy, Trophy last year, right? Correct. Correct. He was at Cathedral. You know, um, We've had uh, Reddy Short at Arizona. We had Eric Fleming at Oregon State. The John Stuckey at uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. We had Jonathan Levin at UNLV. Taj Hassan at UNLV. Mark Fanal UNLV. We've had uh, Vanderbilt. What was the young man from oh, Vanderbilt? Oh, Wiley Vanderbilt was a pre-med student. We've had he was uh, one of my favorite guys that you had over there when we right. spent some and, time. And now, now this year I have Ashton Sanders. He has Notre Dame, Wisconsin. He has almost every single school that he could want. And, you know, it's just so funny how times have changed now because now these kids are getting NILs in high school, which is just changing the whole way game is played. And that's a topic, so, for, another, that's a topic for another day because you could talk about that for hours. And, and I, I was going to say that. So, yes, you bring up a very valid point, but we can spend an entire hour <laughs> talking about N NILs and right. and just go into that rabbit hole. But we'll save that for another another. Uh, another show Sounds but good. we'll just we'll keep our questions going we're going to wrap okay. it up here shortly as soon as these questions are done okay but um let me make sure i try to run through them at least Sounds uh, good. let me pop up this next question real quick <clears throat> how do you deal with conflicts between players you know football is an emotional game and tempers get flared all the time but at the end of the day we have to remember that we're brothers we're brothers we're not enemies we're on the same team together and just like if you have siblings, siblings get into arguments. Right. I don't know no siblings that's never had gotten into an argument. And, and it's the same thing with us. But at the end of the day, we have each other's back and we're not going to let nobody hurt our brother. Right on. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You, you, you're coming up with some good ones, though, uh, my, my, my brother, uh, AJ. <laughs> I guess that's that 17 years paying off a little bit, huh? Man, that's what's up, man. I, I love it. I appreciate Ab that. I'll absolutely. Keep it rolling here with our next question. What's the best way to encourage my child to succeed in sports? The best way to encourage is, is to let them know that you have their back and you support their decisions. But the most important thing is if your son starts something, don't ever let them quit. So if the season is not going right, don't let them quit. Encourage them to finish the season. Then they don't have to play next year. So, you know, and, and talk to them. Find out what's going on, why things are not going the way they want to go, mm. you know? First of all, talk to your son, see what's going on. Second, go observe a practice before you talk to a coach. And then you can see, actually, maybe you can see, hey, you're in the back. You came late to practice. Why don't we try to fix this? So, you know, communication is key in everything. Right. And I mean, like, look, uh, in my, you know, few years coaching at the high school level, uh, I came up with the, with the observation. And my observation was this, soft parents produced soft kids. 100%. And that kind of ties in what you're saying is, yeah, you know, we're humans. We can we can change our minds about playing a sport or switching a sport or whatever. Absolutely. We don't want to, we don't want to encourage quitting. No, absolutely not. You know, so let no. make them, you know, not make them, but encourage them. To finish what they started. finish what they started. And then you can have a conversation when right. the season's <laughs> over. Because if they start quitting now, that could become a pattern in life. Yeah. And the going get tough, they always want the easy way out. 
Yeah. So the whole thing is to make them, make them finish, guys. Make them finish everything. Great advice, Coach. Great advice. Appreciate we got it. some good questions here coming from our do, uh, from do, our team do. here, and our and you're and, and you're killing it. You're <laughs> killing it. <laughs> so we'll keep it rolling, Coach. To our next question. Okay. What's the best way to calm my child down when he or she is too nervous to perform? You know, we see that a lot where a kid is really talented or mm -hmm. maybe they're still going through their process, but then they're a little bit, you know, standoffish or they're shy or, or maybe right. they're just scared or right. what you, what's what, the best way what to, I, to, to bring a kid on in that way? What, what I do is I'll get to him and I'll talk to him and say, listen, we just done this. We're not doing nothing that we haven't done in practice every single day. So it's, this is nothing new. Just because the person on the other side is a person that you don't know, but you know where you're going and you know what you have to do. And then they'll be like, you know what, coach? You're right. You know, and, and, the, and the whole thing with everything is just communication. Talk to them. Yeah, it goes back let to communication, know. right? Communication is the most important thing, guys. You know, and, and like I say, just let them know. That we're, as a coach in my situation, I never put a kid out there in a situation he's never been in. And the most important thing is I try to put all my kids in situations where they can succeed. And my kids know that. And then, and then when I tell them that, they'll be like, you're right. And they'll go out there and they'll do a great job. And, 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 the, and in that same process, that's where you start earning trust. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Awesome. So we just have a couple more questions here, Coach. No, pro no problem, Coach. How do I get my child to listen to me? Uh, when he or she doesn't want to, that's a, that's a question for every parent, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I know, I know back in the islands, we have a little bit, uh, uh, a different way, you know, we got yeah. what, what and, we and, call and, left, and, and, left hook discipline, right? And you know, my parents are from the South, so it was a left and a right hook, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, as a parent, and like I said before, communication is key, but you know, it all starts at home with you guys. And, you know, a coach can't make a kid do what he's supposed to do if he's not doing it at home. Right. You know, so, you know, the coach can't we, we make we work some miracles sometimes, but there's some things that we can't do. And, and it's a combination of at home and on at the school and on the football field. So the parents and the coaches all have to be on the same page. You know, That's, you can you're uh, making a, you make a very important point, because how many times have we seen parents try to blame the coach? All the time, and then those those same those very same kids aren't even listening to the parents at home. Exactly, like you know, I had, I had one time I had a parent that said, "You know, I can't believe you're not letting my son play," and I just told him, "I can't believe you didn't have your son in practice every day." <laughs> you know, how, how you had to be, oh, yeah. uh, and, then, and then that had to calm them down. But you know, like I say, the coaches, parents, we have to be on the same page, and the best part, like I say, communication. Right. Communication. That, that makes that makes 100 percent sense. Absolutely. All right. Let's uh, let's get a couple more here. Coach, try to squeeze a couple more before you finish packing for your trip to Hawaii. All right. For sure. Uh, man. What's the best way to deal with a coach when the coach makes a decision that I don't agree with? I'm I meaning a parent. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've had uh, you've never had a parent question you as a head coach. right? <laughs> no, never. Here, here, here's what I tell all my parents. When they don't agree with the decision I made, I say, come to practice every day next week and then talk to me on Thursday. Because and the thing that we do is we film our practices. So what I'd also tell them is watch last week's practice and then you watch the practice when your son knows you're coming and you'll see the difference how your son do. Because it's one thing for a fact, the big eye in the sky, don't lie. That's you right. know, if he if he's not getting no reps in practice, why should he earn that spot to play in the game? Right. So, so you know, basically, they, they got to earn that at every practice. They got to earn their playing time. One hundred percent. Nothing. Not, because, not, not just and, because you have the jersey on. Right. Because in life, nobody's going to give you nothing in life. So I'm trying to teach them life lessons as well. That's awesome, Coach. Appreciate it, Coach. We got a couple more here. Let's sure. keep it rolling. Can you share, Coach, your big three? I call it the big three. What's your big three advice for aspiring football players wanting to succeed in American football? My big three, academics, weight room, and accountability. Academics, weight room, and accountability. Those That's are my awesome, big man. Three. That's awesome. What's the uh, – oh, we got a we gotta hit over here. Go Phantoms. I see three stops in here, huh? From Simi, uh, Simi Mwala, one year. Uh, can we talk a little bit about Simi? You had Simi there for hey, four I, I had years. Simi there. Four, I had three Simi, years. 
I had Simi there for three years. You know, Simi was probably about six five, sixty five pounds when he got <laughs> there. So we called we called him Treetop. Skin, skin and bones. Skin and bones. Now Treetop is probably six seven. 345, 350, and got a great chance to be drafted next year in the draft. See me, I I I see a lot of potential in see me, not only uh as a football player, but um just as a man, you know. Right. He, he's grown he's, a lot since the day he's one. He's grown a lot, and uh, I wish him a lot of success over there at Jackson State now. Uh, I know he transferred from Utah, and we right. had him on here uh, a few weeks ago. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah. I love, I love but, uh, you know, he's one of my favorite kids of all the time. You know, what's so funny is when, when Simi was at school, I would drive him to school. He always wanted to sit in the front seat. The tallest dude wanted to be in the front seat. So that, that was some good times back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Coach, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, share the benefits of attending Cathedral High School. For well, anybody the out there who, who, who may be interested, right. we actually do a lot of consulting with parents and, and coaches from overseas. Right, want to come here and play, and well, the, so I want to give you this opportunity to kind of share and, and promote your program, coach. For, for sure. So here at Cathedral High School, we're an all boys Catholic school, so we have about five hundred boys in our school. Of the five hundred boys, eighty five percent play some type of sport. Mm. The unique unique thing about Cathedral is we give out four point five million dollars in financial aid, so almost every single kid at Cathedral is on financial aid. The other good thing about Cathedral is our class sizes is small, so they get a lot of individual attention. All teachers are required to get there at 745. No teacher can leave before 330. We have study hall for our boys. We don't have any books. Everything's done on their iPad. And it's just everybody at Cathedral cares about Cathedral, and we care about our students. You know, so if any of you guys are thinking about coming over, coming to Cathedral, I would open you with open arms, you know, because it's a place where you can succeed and you can build a future. And the most important thing about Cathedral is we have a hundred percent ratio of our kids to go to college, which is good. But the most important number is 87% of those kids graduate with their college degree. And that's what I'm most part of. That's awesome, coach. I know I had some good times there, Cathedral with you. I, I wish you were still there with me, coach. <laughs> Brother Tom and and uh, uh, Mr. Farfan. Absolutely. Uh, is, is Elaine is Elaine still there? Miss Edwards. You know, Ms. Elaine left and she's teaching at elementary school in Carson now. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she there's did. a lot of great there's a lot of great teachers out there. Absolutely. Who really cared about the kids. You guys also have a successful basketball and a successful soccer program as well. That and and also track. Our track team is ranked number three in the country as well. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. We have the fastest two freshmen in the, in the country. We have two freshmen that ran 10-7 and 21-76 and 21-84. Well, Coach, so we, uh, uh, I, I didn't realize you guys were developing another uh, dominance in another sport, but uh, I encourage our, our, our followers to follow Coach Anthony on his uh, uh, at head coach AJ on his page on Facebook. Um and, and coach, let me thank you again, please. Hey, no problem, guys. If you guys uh, don't want to have me back on, I would love to come back on and chop it up with you guys some more. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, before I let you go, coach, please encourage our followers and your followers as well, coach, to follow us on the American Football Institute Club page on Facebook. Absolutely, well we, got, we, got another, we got another Cathedral alum in here, Emmanuel Alpha. Oh, nice, coach AJ's on here. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're showing you some love, coach. I hey, appreciate these guys. You know, that, that just goes to show you when you when you take care of the kids, they appreciate you when they're done and they'll come back and say hey to you. And that's why I do this. So so tell me how how you guys what is it looking like for you guys this season? And hey, you know, I have, a lot of young, I have a lot of young talent. You know, if, if if I don't make a deep run in the playoffs, I'll be disappointed. Who who are some of the teams that you play in your league, coach? And what's the name it, of your league? We're we're in the Angeles League. So we play Paraclete, St. Francis, Loyola, Crespi. And uh, St. Paul. Hey, look at Emiliano Sandoval, another cathedral alumni. What's up, Emiliano? <laughs> nice. You but, know, if you would have, if you would have uh, let more of the folks know, um, right, that you're you on know, today, it would have been, it would have been popping. It would have been popping. You know, next time I come on, hopefully I don't have my showcase the day before and not packing to go to Hawaii the next day, and then we'll definitely have a great time with a lot of people in there with some good questions. Well, I truly appreciate you, Coach. Travel safe to appreciate the you, Coach. state. And, um, you know, make sure you make a stop at uh, two places for me. Zippies. Zippies. And rainbows. Rainbow. And, uh, 
Eggs and things. Uh, and what? Eggs and things. Oh, yes. That place is, <laughs> is good, too. You're talking about the one in Kailua? Uh-huh. Okay. Right on. Yep. There you go, Coach. All right, Coach. Well, appreciate coach, you guys. Much love to you. Appreciate you. And uh, take care and peace. All right. For sure, guys. Have a good day. All right. Now, take care. For sure.